I kind of feel recently, you know, the field finally、uh, has made、um, you know big strides、uh, when it comes to you know sort of much better understanding about what's going on. Um, in terms of human genetics,、uh, we now know, you know, there are at least seventy, eighty human genes out there.、Um, you know, a, a, a variations of those genes can increase the risk of、um, of developing、uh, Alzheimer's.、Um, and、um, and you know, thanks to the increased、uh, funding from the NIH. Supporting Alzheimer's research, I think you know a lot of researchers now they can do you know many more、um, cutting edge and you know using the the the, the latest technology to apply to to Alzheimer's disease and and see what's going on. So so I sort of feel we've come a long way in terms of you know understanding you know the contributions of、uh, key genetic factors. To the disease, and from studying those genes, we kind of get closer to what goes wrong at the cellular, molecular, and brain circuit levels that、um, that can lead to、um, Alzheimer's-like symptoms. So, so knowing that is really important because this type of information provides、um, new targets. For therapeutic intervention, and you know, nowadays there are a lot of different ways to to approach、um, diseases. In addition to the traditional,、um, you know, chemical、uh, molecules,、um, now there are a lot of macro molecules such as immunotherapy. You know, like what you mentioned, the FDA approved new Alzheimer's drugs. They are mainly、um, uh, antibody. Uh, immunotherapies, but they're also, you know,、um, um, sort of promising, you know, news about other kind of um, um, gene therapies, such as using antisense oligonucleotide、um, therapy, and、um, you know, other new ways of thinking about treat- treating the disease. So, yeah, I think we have reason to be、um, more optimistic about treatment.